Hey guys, so I have a new planner to review for you guys today. And as always, I'm gonna break down this entire planner like I usually do for my reviews. But I have mixed feelings on this planner. So if you're curious to see what those thoughts are, just keep on watching. So the planner I have to share with you guys is by the company My Infinite Agenda. Now this was established in 2016, so it's a fairly new planner company, which is exciting. And it was started by a pair of friends who really wanted to put gratitude at the forefront and center of your planner, as well as being able to remind you that you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. So the planner comes in three different cover options. The cover I have to show you guys is the blush cover with the rose gold binding. There's also a black cover option with a copper binding and a navy cover option with a gold binding. So I think that's fantastic. It also has this very sturdy planner band that's attached to the back of the planner. And in the back of the planner, you have a slide in pocket from the side. So I hope that the color is not getting drowned out in the lighting, but it is a very beautiful blush color. So the awesome thing about this planner is that each cover option is associated with a different charity. So the blush cover option that I have, a percentage of the profit goes to Days for Girls International. Now I will link more about that charity down below. And for example, the black planner and the navy planner also have their corresponding charities. I believe one of them is Charity Water for those of you who are familiar. So I think that's great that you are shopping for a cause. So on to some specs. The planner retails for $58. The cover size is 8 inches across and 10 inches tall. Also with the code MITTHE10 you get 10% off your entire order and they're doing free shipping the entire month of December for the holidays. The page size is 7 and a quarter inches across and 9 and 3 quarters inches tall. You do get a wire bound binding that is an inch and a quarter in diameter. The planner runs from January 2018 to December 2018. And you're also getting a set of laminated tabs that are all in this teal color that match the inside of the planner. The paper quality is nice. It's 120 GSM, but for reference, it's not as thick as Happy Planner paper. All right, so let's jump into the inside. So here you have just a very spacious cover page. Then you get the title page of the planner, a little bit more about the planner. And now we're jumping into more of the goal setting part of the planner. So this is a page full of seven declarations that they give you that serve as kind of an example for positive affirmations that you should tell yourself. And this page is a very straightforward explanation of how to phrase things in a more positive manner and to keep positive thoughts in your planner. So here's just the layout of the preface they give you before the prompts. So they say, complete these prompts to outline your gratitude, short-term goals, long-term goals, and wildest dreams. So the first category is gratitude, and that starts out with today I am grateful for. And this is just a line at the beginning of the page, and the rest is just graph paper. And that is the case for every single one of these prompts. So you have the gifts in my life include, I feel so thankful for, when I think of my life, it is so incredible that. Next up, we have short-term goals. So I am excited to receive, I am looking forward to the success of, it's so wonderful that, and then we end here with long-term goals. Next year I see myself, in five years my life will include, this is fun, I see myself. So those are further thoughts on where you see yourself in the future. Oops, no, you actually have one more section that's wildest dreams. So then when possibilities are endless, I dream of. When I allow my imagination to run wild, I see myself. And my wildest wishes include. You then get an inspirational quote from Martin Luther King that says, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And then that jumps into your vision board pages. So this explains a little bit about what a vision board is. 
that give you four pages with a patterned edge to draw out your vision board. So then we have your year at a glance pages with 2018 on one side. and 2019 on the other. Then you have your divider page and this divider is the exact same for every single month. So next up we have your monthly calendar and dashboard pages and I actually haven't seen this before in a, a planner this big that the calendar is actually only on one page and I hope on this camera you can see it because I know the font's quite small but the boxes are quite tiny and it runs from Monday through Sunday so you have it all there on one page holidays are not included and you have a little section for notes and your previous month at a glance and your upcoming month at a glance so the next page is what's supposed to function as your monthly dashboard page and these prompts on this page are very similar to the prompts at the beginning of the planner. Also on graph paper, so you have this month I am excited to accomplish these short-term goals. This month I will grow closer to these long-term goals. And at the bottom it's in my wildest dreams I'm looking forward to receiving. So it ties in all of the sections that you had worked on at the beginning of your planner. Now getting into the weekly pages of your planner, this layout is quite spacious. So you have two days per page. So you have the month at the top of the page, and then you have Monday and Tuesday sharing one entire page. And just to give you a size comparison, the height of each of these boxes is roughly four inches. And on the side of every box you have, today I am looking forward to, and a section that says, today I am super grateful for. And at the bottom of every single one of your weekly pages, you're going to get a small quote. On the opposite side of the page, you get your current month at a glance with the current week that you're on highlighted in teal. And Wednesday and Thursday, share a page. Your Friday through Sunday also share a page. So you have your Friday that has one big box like all the others up here, so that stays the same. And then Saturday and Sunday have a split box, and then the what you're looking forward to section and the what you're grateful for section are split among the two boxes. But the space to write on Saturday and Sunday is significantly smaller than all the other boxes, so that's something to keep in mind. Then on the opposite side of your weekend spread, you have a notes page to round out the week, and that's graph paper. But this note page actually only goes to half of the page, and then the other half of the page is one large motivational quote. At the end of every month, you have a section called This Month's Infinite Winnings, and this is a section at the end of each month to track goals and dreams that may have come to fruition. These are your infinite winnings. Take some time to reflect on them here, and soon many more will be coming your way. So again, this is just a prompt, and you have graph paper on one side and graph paper on the other. And the planner continues like that throughout the rest of the year. So what are my overall thoughts on this planner? From the get-go, it is very pretty to look at. I love the attention to detail that they put in the exterior of the planner. If you're into very feminine looking agendas or you have a very feminine theme going on on your desk, I can see this looking absolutely beautiful on any desk. And the reason I say on a desk is because this isn't a very portable planner at all. And that's not saying that it's meant to be. Not every agenda or planner is meant to be portable. But just giving you guys a heads up, this is quite heavy. One, because the cover is quite hefty and two because the layout that they're using probably requires a lot of pages and because they're using pretty good quality paper it's bound to add to the heaviness of this planner that being said i think this would be perfect for someone who's in search of a desk planner and needs that space to write everything they need to do throughout the week and have felt maybe constricted by other planner layouts that maybe don't accommodate what they need to write or maybe they have very big handwriting, they wanna do very big lettering in their planner. I mean, you can play a lot with that layout through month, 
from Monday through Friday. However, because I keep it 100% honest on this channel with everything I have ever reviewed, where this planner loses me is the price. It retails for $58, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And I'm going to explain to you guys why, in my opinion, I think that's a little high. $58 puts this planner at the second most expensive planner I have ever reviewed on my channel. The first being the Emily Lay Simplified Planner, and these are neck and neck. That one is also $58. I will put the review I did on that in the eye in the sky. Um, and usually when you're talking about over 50 something dollars for a planner, you're getting into the daily planner category where you're covered with every single day throughout the entire year, which is why they tend to be more expensive. Or you're looking at something that has luxe finishes from start to finish, or you're going the more Erin Condren route where it's customization. And the reason I bring up Erin Condren is because I'm looking more at binding similarities. I know Erin Condren's Quail and this is wire bound, but you know what I'm saying? Like you get a, once you're paying over $50 for an Erin Condren, you're getting a very high level of customization, including picking the layout of the inside. Now, obviously this isn't a daily planner and obviously you don't get that level of customization other than the exterior that I explained but I do not think you're getting those luxe details from start to finish in this planner. So my point being the cover of this planner is quite luxe. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but this is actually all in rose gold foil. And this pattern has rose gold accents as well. And that matches the rose gold binding that it has. And that's true for every cover that you get in this planner. I just wish I would have seen more of those luxe touches throughout the entire planner. For example, the Lake and Loft planner review that I did, which I'll also link in the eye in the sky, that was my Luxe pick for 2017 because the Luxe finishes carried through from the cover all the way through every single spread of the planner where you even got gold foiling on all of the dividers within certain spreads of the planner. And I believe that planner this year retails for $40. So I believe for the price, you were totally getting an ultimate Luxe experience. So delving more into the layout of this planner, it does claim to have expansive functional writing spaces. And like I said, that is partly true throughout the week. But if you look at something even like the calendar, as I mentioned before, for how large this planner is, this calendar is very, very small. Look, I'm just going to compare this to the mini happy planner calendar spread. So this is their undated one. And again, this is a mini size happy planner. So it's like kind of a personal wide size for those who aren't familiar. And this is how much bigger every single square is compared to this planner. My point being that if this is going to be the planner that you invest your money in, that you want to be at your desk, whether at home or at work, most of the time you want it to be a planner that is much bigger than this if you're looking at a planner this size. That tends to be the case. In that same vein, if this is meant to be for somebody who really lacks that writing space that they crave, I also find the weekend spaces to be too small. And I think the space has to come from somewhere. Either they could have made the looking forward to and grateful for only one line on the weekends or maybe one line throughout the entire week just to give you that entire bout of space here or taking it from the adjacent page where you have half of it notes and half of it a motivational quote. I think they could have made this part Sunday to have Saturday in its entirety on the other page and then gotten rid of the quote at the bottom and just replace it with the notes pages, if that makes sense. I think that way it would have kept the functionality of having an expansive space to write through every aspect of the planner and not only Monday through Friday, especially as I mentioned, a planner of this size. And while they do give you these goal planning sheets at the beginning, in my personal opinion, I don't think that they're unique enough to recommend this as a goal planning planner, if that makes sense. Like these aren't like the Lara Casey power sheets, which I know is an entire planner on its own, but it's also not like the planner that I just reviewed that was like very unique in its productivity layout or like other goal planning worksheets that you can download, I would recommend this as a planner. Like it's mainly a planner and the goal planning worksheets that they do give at the beginning are really just prompts on graph paper that them and themselves are not unique. Like next year I see myself isn't a unique 
prompt. I think it's nice to have it, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's worth the price uptick of what it is. I think maybe they could have taken this out and if that had anything to do with affecting the price. Obviously guys, this is just my opinion. I'm dying to know what you guys think of this planner in the comments down below. If this planner fits all of your needs and is within your budget, by all means, please buy it. You won't be disappointed with it. The only reason that I do a price breakdown the way I do on my channel is especially when you're talking about price points that high, I think it's very helpful to have an opinion from someone who not only reviews planners on a YouTube channel, but also has spent a ton of money on planners. Like I have not been frugal in any of my planners. Like I have spent money on some planner folios and planners in general and stationery. And I just like to do a price breakdown of whether I think it's worth it or not. So yes, I think it's a beautiful planner. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Yes. I think the price is too high for what you're actually getting. So with that being said, if that is it for me, give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe on your way out, and as always, I will catch you in my next one. Bye guys.